Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Sir Mikulagi's YouTube page. Uh, today I'm very honored to have uh, Grand Chief Sir Michael Samara and Lady Voronika Samara. <coughs> Sir Michael Samara is the founding father of Papua New Guinea. For many of you around the world who do not know, um, basically, if I was in America, I'd be sitting with Sir George Washington and Lady Washington. That's the magnitude. And if I was in Australia, it'd be Sir Edward Barton and Lady Barton. So, without further ado, um, if you like this video clip, please press, press like and subscribe on the channels on the side. Uh, without further ado, uh, I'd like to say thank you, uh, Grand Chief. Thank you very much for joining me on this day, or this interview, Lady Veronica. Um, basically, how is uh, a lot of Papua New Guineans, uh, we call Papua New Guinea because of people like yourself, who you were the basically founder of the country. You started this country when we were, we were called Papuans and New Guineans and Highlanders. And uh, as a young man, um, did you ever think that you would ever become prime minister of this country? No, when I went to school, I, I've always uh, tried to make sure that uh, I discipline myself, discipline to my studies, complete my education. I went to grade nine and after that I went to teacher training, but I went back to school twice. I went back to school in uh, uh, 1962 to go and do my Queensland Junior Certificate. Five subjects in one year. I I made a grade. Then I went back teaching. I had a teacher certificate when I decided to. I only have grade nine to get a teacher certificate, which is the lowest you can th think of. But uh, it was the certificate at the time, which was very. You know, we were honored that uh, some of us were able to completely our education at grade nine level and at grade nine level uh, which is equivalent to grade eight Australian Queensland we're following Queensland service at the time but uh, you know the, they, they gave us a good stepping gave me good stepping to better myself I became a teacher I went out I went back to school again 62 got my Queensland Junior Certificate. We have to do that to qualify for third division of the Australian Public Service. When you are uh, at that level, uh, they don't regard you. Papua New Guineans were never considered that there will be officers. And some of us became first auxiliary division officers. Auxiliary division is, you know, what auxiliary means. Yes. Helping. We were only helpers. We never created anything. And that's what, what, what the at the time, the colonialists think of us. Mm. We're good uh, workers. They use us in plantations. They use us to work for the industries and so on. But we were never people fit for. But I said to people, we given a good education background, we can achieve a lot. That's what they did. Grand Chief, how did you feel when, uh, growing up in the time where we had colonial masters who were kind of, they were helping us, but they also belittling us also at the same oh, yes, time. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. I started teaching and I, I taught with the, uh, quite a number of Australians, but we were assistant teachers. We were never called full grade uh, teachers. We were only assistant, assistant native teachers. And that's the classification they gave to us. And uh, no matter, you know, what you teach, you don't go close to them. You don't go to the house. You don't sit in the office or uh, uh, the desk, no. You were considered to be a second-class person, and I, did, I was one person who did not believe that our people can be like that. Our people given a wonderful opportunity; they can, because from my own background, in our traditional way, young men is given an opportunity to do. So for us, 
coming is more important to us in civic revelation. When a young man knows how to carve, he can do things. Carve his, put his own post, put his own house, he does things himself. Become independent of his parents. That's right. So I thought this kind of thought should be instilled into young people. And that's, that's the food I followed. And as I said, you know, I left at the uh, grade nine, but I thought I better better myself and uh, to go to become an officer of public service. You have to qualify for highest matriculation. That's a living certificate or whatever you call it now yes. today. So I had to go back to school. In Sixty-five, I went back to administrative college with the rest of Papua Guineans. That's where I met your father and the others that were in the seminary. Okay. That's one thing I didn't think about, going to become archbishop or anything. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so I kept uh, in teaching and uh, I thought my way to go into politics is convince people that uh, I can be the leader of ECP people here. So I, I was. ECB people mean all of Papua New Guinea. I can be leader of Papua New Guinea. That's right. And so you had that belief and you... I you had that belief, yeah. yeah.